Is there more than meets the eye with the whole movement to ban TikTok in the USA? It was decided last Friday, January 27th, that there was going to be an official vote on whether TikTok is banned as of next month. The House of Foreign Affairs Committee has decided to host an actual vote of whether or not TikTok will be banned from the United States. This vote will take place someplace next month at a date that has not been disclosed yet. Now, as you've probably already heard, a lot of states are actually banning it for government officials so far. However, there's recent information that shows there might not be as much concern as people think there is. Hi, I'm Ben, and I'm a short form video strategist. So if you want to stay up to date on all our tips and strategies we use for our clients, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But before we go any further, check out this intro. Before we go forward with the new information, let's take a look at a bit older information about what the history of people trying to ban or the Senate trying to ban TikTok is so far. So as you all probably know, TikTok is actually known by a bigger company called ByteDance. And now ByteDance has its ownership and is based in Beijing. Now this brings about a bunch of concern for the people in the US because the idea is that TikTok is stealing lots of information off of American citizens and bringing that information jet back to the Chinese Communist Party. Essentially, some American politicians are considering that TikTok is actually being used as a machine for propaganda and censorship. However, these are all just claims thus far. Now, funny enough, let's back it up into 2020. Former President Donald Trump thought about this and saw this coming earlier than everybody else, and he tried to ban TikTok from being even allowed in the app stores. He tried to stop more people from downloading it, and he even went as far as trying to get an American company to purchase TikTok. He was even at the point of having negotiations where Walmart, the big corporation, and Oracle Tech Company were going to partner up and buy 20% of the shares in TikTok or the controlling shares in TikTok so that they could determine more influence in the United States. However, at that negotiation, ByteDance or TikTok would still own 80% of that. Therefore, after a bunch of court cases, a bunch of uh, going back and forth, then uh, the actual movement from Donald Trump was thrown out the window and it wasn't talked about since until recently. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into what the big concern is about TikTok and its use by American citizens. The number one concern is the fact that it's a Chinese owned company and that the information will make it back to the Chinese Communist Party. Now, before we even go into that and we talk about your information being stolen by a Chinese company, we should also recognize that every major platform, every major AI, for the most part, is collecting massive amounts of data on you. This isn't anything secret. In the terms and conditions that we sign up for when we download these apps, we are many times signing away the rights to our data. And quite often, it's not just the data that they gather from inside that app. It's the data from our phones in general because they can gather information from other apps. However, make sure you read all the terms and conditions of all your apps before agreeing to anything. So it kind of flows into the concern with TikTok is not the fact that they're gathering data. It's the fact of who has access to the data that they are gathering. Now, theoretically, we are not hearing anything about Meta or the Alphabet company, so them gathering data on us must not, must not be a big deal for, for the government of the United States. So therefore, if the information from TikTok could stay within the United States, there wouldn't be a concern anymore because the information is not being taken to people the government doesn't want it to be sent to. Now, how it may have sounded so far is that ByteDance is, is pretty much owned by the Chinese Communist Party, which is not true. However, the concern comes from U.S. Senator Mark Rubio, where he states that the Chinese Communist Party has access to ByteDance's information or TikTok's information. Essentially, every time, every time they want to get information from TikTok, they have open access to it, which blatantly means all the information they gather is a security risk for Americans. It's a little funny because since 2021, the CFI US, which is the uh, American Committee on Foreign Investments inside the US, big long name, has been in negotiation, negotiations with TikTok regarding how to have the best safety protocol so that American information cannot be leaked to other countries. In fact, TikTok has invested over $1.5 billion in creating a security network to ensure that that information gathered about the American citizens would not be transferred outside of the country. In fact, a TikTok spokesperson even went as far as saying that, and I quote, a comprehensive package of measures with layers of government and independent oversight to ensure that there are no backdoors into TikTok that could be used to manipulate the path platform. So essentially, TikTok is saying, we're doing everything we can to make sure that your data is safe. However, the U.S. government feels like that's not the case. Now, is there actual hard evidence that shows that TikTok is using their information to give to the Chinese government? So far, TikTok has declared many, many times that they have no evidence of the information being transferred from ByteDance or TikTok 
to the Chinese government. However, there was an article put out by Forbes a couple of years ago stating that TikTok, some TikTok employees have access to that US data if they need be. However, that was all the article really said. So are they using that information for other purposes? We don't know. But let's take it a little a, a step further and to see what the FBI has to say about it. Now, of course, we've heard the outspoken FBI saying it's bad and it's a, an actual risk to American citizens. However, recently, Connecticut cyber officials have reached out to the FBI to try to gather more information after seeing that Maryland had just made it so that their government officials shouldn't be on TikTok anymore. So the cybersecurity people at Connecticut reached out to the FBI because they were considering to do it for their government officials. However, before moving forward, they wanted to see if there was any further information that they should know to warrant their decision to actually ban TikTok. And in an article by, by the Al Jazeera, they actually uncovered public documentation of phone calls and emails between the FBI and the cybersecurity officials that released some really interesting information. Interestingly enough, in the emails itself, the FBI who was uh, speaking on behalf of the FBI, quoted that the analysts say that the decision to ban TikToks uh, for states like Maryland and other states was actually based on information not related to TikTok. Instead, their decision and their evidence for backing their decision to ban government on TikTok was due to news reports and other open source information about China in general, nothing specific about TikTok. So does this mean that people are judging it based off of the fear factor of what they're hearing? or actual hard-based evidence. The Connecticut cyber official determined that at this time, TikTok is actually an incredibly low risk due to the fact that there is no hard evidence showing that information is actually being transferred from TikTok to the Chinese Communist Party. This coincides with the fact that TikTok completely disagrees with what Christopher Rye of the FBI is stating with all his warnings. And instead they're saying that everything he's saying is actually based off hypothetical circumstances and there actually is no evidence of any wrongdoing so essentially tiktok is saying show us the proof that we've actually done wrong a tiktok spokesperson even came forward and said that and i quote as we have said before these state and university bans are not driven by specific intelligence about tiktok and are driven by misinformation about our company and our service interesting so what are your thoughts on this now let's jump into what if it is actually banned? And I want us to take a look at the actual big picture of this. Because the fact is, as of right now, there are over 120 million American users active on the app every single day. Not only that, they open up their app up to eight times a day and they watch up to 90 minutes of TikTok a day. They're watching an hour and a half on their phone of short form videos. So then the question is, there's an app that has 120 million active users every day who open up that app up to eight times, eight times a day and they also watch up to 90 minutes of short form video. What happens if that app just disappears. So if the thousands of uh, creators and influencers that are on there, sorry, if the thousands upon thousands of influencers and creators that are on there, as well as e-commerce business and other businesses that have most of their revenue come through TikTok, if they are suddenly forced to just have that shut off to them completely, they won't go quietly. There will be a bit of noise to be made, which could actually make the US government handle this a little bit differently. Because if you think of it, in a big picture, influencer and business wise, this app has a huge marketing capability to just take that capability and throw it out the window and ban it without actually capitalizing it in some other way doesn't make sense even for a government, which leads me to believe there might be other options. President Biden could actually take a look at once again, buying the TikTok app in house in the States and just keep all the information inside the States. This would take away any security problems and still maintain everything that people have built up so far on TikTok. Or if this app is completely banned and taken out, this leaves a gap in the system. Yes, we have Instagram. Yes, we have Facebook. Yes, there are other forms of short form video. But the fact of the matter is, is that people came to TikTok because it was new, it was fresh, it was a new style. Essentially, the drive might be towards to have another new app that's similar to TikTok that takes off almost immediately. Now, at the last part of this video, I wanna leave you with some open-ended questions. I'm just gonna give you some facts and I want you to think about these facts afterwards. TikTok is the fastest growing social network on the planet right now. As of last year, they made $18 billion off ad revenue, which was a 55% increase from the previous year. Now I give you the stat because the other mega platforms such as Alphabet and Meta, they didn't see an increase near as much as TikTok did. In fact, they're having articles put out about them saying that the ad budgets and ad spend from big companies is actually going down. If that's the case, why is TikTok ad spend going up? Which begs the question, is there some ulterior motive or perchance a bit of a push from these bigger networks, these bigger American-based social platforms that don't like the competition? Could they be a part of the sudden push to get rid of TikTok? Tell me what you think. I'd love to see what you have to say in the comments and make sure to subscribe to us for more updated data on short form video and TikTok.